So welcome to the lecture on state space method. In this lecture we will discuss about state space representation of a system. So till the, the lectures we have discussed, we followed the transfer function approach of uh, mathematical modeling and the root locus, finding poles, zeros. So all these uh, lectures were subjected to the complex frequency domain technique that is transfer function approach. Now we will discuss about the time domain approach, specifically the state space approach. So here the state space, uh, space approach is a modern time domain approach and a unified method for modeling analyzing and designing a wide range of systems. We remember in case of transfer functions, when we define the transfer function as the ratio of output and input, when the initial conditions are zero and it is only valid for linear and time invariant systems. That was not valid for nonlinear systems. We took one case of nonlinear system where we did the approximation of a nonlinear systems to linear system and then we applied the transfer function approach. So there is limitation of the frequency domain approach because they are only applicable to linear systems, only to time invariant systems and single input, single output systems. However, when we follow the state space approach, that is a time domain approach, this is applicable to nonlinear systems. So the systems that, that have the saturation behavior, backlash or inertia. So we can use the nonlinear systems to model using the state space approach. Time varying systems, the systems, for example, missiles, where the systems parameters are changing, the mass is changing. So we can model these systems using a space approach and systems with non-zero initial conditions because the transfer function approach, we, uh, we defined it as the zero initial conditions multiple input out or and multiple output systems state space approach can deal with the multiple input systems and multiple output system it is more suitable to digital computers and digital simulations so more involvement of computers digital computers and simulations we know that the frequency domain approach was more I intuitive because we were able to represent the graphically the, the root locus, the movement of poles. So we were able to more visualize graphically the things. But this approach is not as intuitive as the classical approach that is frequency domain approach. So here we have to perform several calculations and then we have to physically interpret, interpret the physical interpretation of the model we have to make. So here uh, we have a system. If we compare here the transfer function approach, there was some input and output and there was the transfer function Now we come to here the time domain state space approach. So here we have several inputs are possible. So here let's say E1 T, U2 T, these are the input vectors, U R T, 
so these are input vectors here is the output y1 t y2 t y r t so the output vector y so here is the input vector u and this is output vector y now what is inside because here it was transfer function and we say that transfer function is uh, it represents the characteristics of the system that is the in internal properties of the system so here we have the internal properties of the system defined in terms of the state variables so here we have state variables so system is described by state variables x1 x2 and xn so there are n state variables and we define the system so here system variable is any variable that responds to an input or initial conditions in a system so system variable is defined as any variable that responds to an input or initial conditions in a system so for example if we have a spring mass system and we apply some input force f and mass is moving with certain position its position is moving so its position is varying so we can take it is responding to the input that is force so the position can be one of the system variable the state variables the state variable is the smallest set of linearly independent system variables so state variables are those vari system variables and this is the smallest set of linearly uh, independent system variables so system variables can be many because any variable that responds to the input or initial conditions that is a system variable but it is possible that one system variable is varying because the other variables are varying so and the particular variable system variable can be represented as the linear combination of other system variables so this variable can't be a state variable it must be linearly independent system variables and linearly independent means when we say linearly independent so if we could write so there are three variables x3 x1 x2 and if i can write x3 as 5x1 plus 2x2 so here x3 is represented in terms of the two variables x1 and x2 so x3 is linearly depending on these variables so x3 is not linearly independent variable and therefore x3 can't be a state variable although it can be a system variable because uh, but it can't be a state variable whether x1 and x2 if they are linearly independent they could be a state variable derivative of a variable is linearly independent variable because if i say x is a variable dx by dt is another variable and this dx by dt can't be represented as linear combination of the x but it is a derivative so therefore these both could be state variables so the smallest set of linearly independent system variables such that the values of the members of the set at time t0 along with known forcing functions 
completely determine the value of all system variables for all t greater or equal to t0. So, if we have at any time t0, we know these values of these state variables for a forcing functions, we can completely know the value of all the system variables. So, only with we know the state variables at any particular time instant for under some input conditions, we can represent the other system variables in terms of state variables because other system variables are somehow they are expressed in terms of the state variables. Then state vector, state vector is a vector whose elements are the state variables. So, if these are the state variables x1, x2, xn, we can say x is x is a state vector because it is a vector that is elements are state variables. Now, the state is space. So, there are n dimensional space, the n dimensional space whose axis are the state variables. So, if there are n state variables, so n dimensional space is the state space where axis of one x represents one state variable. Then state equations. So, state equations are a set of n simultaneous first order differential equations with n variables, where the n variables to be solved are the state variables. So, here the state equations are if there are n state variables, so there are in first order equations, differential equations and these are called the state equations. Then the output equations, so output equations are the algebraic equation that expresses the output variable of a system as linear combination of the state variable and the input. So, it represents the output variable as a linear combination of the state variable and the uh, inputs. So, here we will discuss more uh, in detail about this state equations and output equations because these are the the modeling equations of a system. So, we model a system in state space using these two equations. So, we will discuss more about these equations. So, we discuss state equation. So, we know that a state equation we can write. So, a system can be represented in terms of state equation like x dot equal to a x plus b u for time t greater or equal to t0 and initial conditions and with certain initial conditions. x t0. So, here and the output equation so we define this state equation that n simultaneous first order differential equations will with n state variables so here it is a vector this x and x dot and u and a and b are the matrices now, the output equation is a, represents a linear combination algebraic equation that expresses the output variables as a linear combination of the state variable and the input. So, here y 
the output is Cx plus du. So here we can say x, x is a state vector, this is state vector and x dot is derivative, derivative with respect to time, derivative of the state vector with respect to time. So we can see that x dot that is derivative of the state vector is equal to a times x plus b times u. So here u is the input or control vector. So here u, this u is input and y is output vector. So this y represents the output vector. Now A, this A is system matrix. So this is A is system matrix. and B is input matrix. Then C is output matrix. The C is output matrix. and D is feed forward matrix. So this D is feed forward matrix. So here we have shown the state equation and output equation. So these are the equations that model a uh, system in a state space. Now we can show them on a block diagram like this. So we can see here. So this is input. So here we can, we have represented these both the equations because these both equations model a system and this is a block diagram here in time domain we have shown. So we have an input ut. So this u is ut. Now we see that first we say x dot. So x dot is b times ut. So here x dot b times u 
plus because here is the summation the plus here is x that is ax so we are getting ax plus bu now here x dot we integrate to get x and so here y y equal to c into x plus here d into u so that is going to be some so so this diagram represents this system now we take one example to how we can write these equations for a given system so we with the help of one example we can see So here we can see we have a system here comprising the two masses M1 and M2 and a damper D and a spring K. Now here we have this as X1 and X2. These are the displacement with time T. So now we can write the differential equation for this system first. So this is a second order system. We can represent the free body diagram here. We can write M1. And this is we take the acceleration here. We have here this so we have this force d x1 dot and we have this force k x1 minus x2 similarly for second mass m2 we have this force here and there is a force input so ft is the input force and we take x2 double dot now we apply the newton's second law and we will get m1 x1 double dot equal to minus d x1 dot minus k x1 minus x2 so we can write it as m1 x1 double dot plus d x1 dot plus k x1 minus k x2 that is equal to 0. For this equation we can write as m2 x2 double dot minus k uh, plus k x1 minus x2 So this is equal to plus Ft. So we can write M2 x2 double dot plus k x2 minus k x1 equal to Ft. So we can write now we have to select the state variables here. If you want to write this equation in state space we have to find the state variable now we see that here we have second order differential equation here also the second order differential equation so the minimum number of state variable must be the order of the differential equation so here we have we can have 2 plus 2 4 
state variables. So here let us select x1, v1 and x2 and v2, these are the four state variables. So here we can write So we can write here m1 d square x1 by dt square equal to minus d dx1 by dt minus k x1 plus k x2. And this equation we can write as m2 d square x2 by dt square equal to minus k x2 So, here or we can write plus k x 1 plus f t. So, now here we know that this x 1 by d t equal to v and x 2 x 1 double dot x double dot equal to d v by d t. So, here we can write m 1 again here we can take m 1 here. So, by m 1 here by m 1 and by m 1. So, we can represent this as d v 1 by d t equal to minus k by m 1 x 1 minus d by m 1 v 1 plus k by m 1 x 2. This we can write m 2 d v 2 y d t equal to minus. So, here we again do this m 2 we take here by m 2 by m 2 by m 2. So, minus k by m 2 into x 2 plus k by m 2 into x 1 plus f t by m 2. So, here we have represented the equation in terms of state variable x 1, x 2 and v 1, v 2 and the derivative of this state variable. So, now we have four equations that is if we have x 1, v 1, x 2, v 2 these are the state variable we can write as So, x 1 dot equal to v 1 and x 2 dot equal to v 2. So, this is one equation, this is two equation, this is third equation and this is four equation, fourth equation. So, this equation 1, 2, 3, 4 we have to collect in a matrix. So, we can collect this in a matrix. So, we can write x 1 dot and v 1 dot
and x2 dot and v2 dot. So, these are the and we can write here x1, v1, x2, v2 plus f t. So, now we have to collect this term. So, first equation x 1 dot equal to v 1. So, we have here 0 1 0 0. Then we will get x 1 dot equal to v 1. Then v 1 dot equal to here we have x 1 term. So, minus k by m 1. Then v 1. So, here is minus d by m 1. Then x2, x2 term is k by m1 and v2 is no any term, so it is 0. Then come to x2, so x2 dot equal to v2, so x2 dot equal to v2, so only this will be 1 and other will be 0, then only x2 dot will be v2 and v2 dot will be written from here v2 dot equal to minus. So, x1 is k by m2 and v1 is here 0 term then x2 is minus k by m2 and v2 is 0 plus here in this equation, the last equation is 1 by m2 here. So, 1 by m2 into f t and these will be 0 because so. So, this is we have written this is like x dot equal to a x plus b u. So, this is b, this is a, this is x is the vector and x dot is the derivative. So, this is A is the system matrix and you can see that this matrix contains the parameters of the system K, D, M1, M2. So, the output equation we can write Y1, Y2, uh, Y1, Y2 equal to X1, X2 because here we So, we can write uh, output equation here. So, this could be also 1 0 0 1. So, we can also take so y 1 equal to x 1 if we want the output only this x 1 and x 2. If we also want v 1 and v 2 we can add this this vector and we can write this matrix. So, if you only want this output as the displacement, we can write this as output. So, here we discussed about the state space representation of a system that is the modeling a system in time domain and we found this state equation and output equation and min minimum number of state variables must be the uh, they have the order of the differential equation. So, here we stop and uh, we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.